So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where the Vietnam War happens again. Now in our timeline, this war took place in the 60s and 70s, and in today's scenario, we're going to be taking a look at it taking place in modern time, so 2022. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I also have a second channel that I don't really talk about, but I do want to talk about it now because something is going to be happening over there. The channel name is Adis Goes Pro, and there should be a picture of it on the screen right now. I don't often upload on it, but when I do, it's usually stuff that isn't related to mapping. And uh, for this upcoming video that I'm going to be posting on it is uh, me building a new PC. As you might be able to see over here, we have some PC parts. So if you guys want to see me build that PC, then make sure to subscribe to my second channel. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with this scenario. All right, so we're actually going to be doing this with modern diplomatic ties. Now, uh, in present day, the US and Vietnam hold fairly good relations, while Vietnam and China hold pretty sour relations. So it's safe to say that Vietnam is a U.S. ally in real life, and we're going to be seeing how this kind of affects the war. So just like in real life, we have Vietnamese rebels popping up in the north. So I'm not really sure how this works since Vietnam is already communist. So would these be communistic communists? Probably some weird, very communist ideology. I don't know. The, the, the communistic communists are here. So anyway, now we have another Vietnam Civil War, and of course foreign powers will be getting involved with this conflict. First off, we have China helping out North Vietnam, so it's kind of like how it happened in real life. And I'm not really sure how the US would truly respond to this. I doubt they would get involved, but just for the sake of entertainment and for the sake of this video, we have the US helping out the South. So with this happening, obviously we have North Vietnam having the ge geographical advantage. You know, China is right there and they can easily send supplies into North Vietnam. Whereas the United States is all the way across the Atlantic, or I should say Pacific, because that, that exists too. But anyway, for now, we have North Vietnam pushing down into South Vietnam. Now, the U.S. does manage to get Canada in on our side, but they uh, are definitely going to need some more help, especially over here in the Pacific region. China has been uh, kind of a bully in this region recently, and a lot of countries are not in favor of said bullying. Straight off the bat, we had the Philippines joining in on the side of South Vietnam, as well as Taiwan, South Korea, and then Japan. So with this, obviously South Vietnam is going to have a lot more help, but the country does face the problem of uh, capitulating before any of that help arrives. Because like I said, this is of course Vietnam and then China pushing right down into South Vietnam. Thankfully though, we do have US troops and Filipino troops finally landing in South Vietnam, and pushing back the Chinese and Vietnamese troops. Eventually, this domate is founded under the border between North and South Vietnam, and uh, things don't really move for a while. That is, until China does a little bit of diplomacy and gets both Laos and Cambodia to join in on the war. Obviously, this is bad news for South Vietnam, because now troops are pushing in behind uh, their front. So with that, we do see troops pushing across and eventually cutting off these troops that are stationed on the border. The troops are then squeezed out and evacuate to the Philippines. With this, we have a pretty swift campaign of conquering South Vietnam, although a little bit of it does hold out. So now we have the US and allies pumping troops into this one little spot in South Vietnam. Doing so does let them push out in the capture a majority of southern Vietnam and even start a light campaign into Cambodia. So with this war kind of not going in the favor of the blue team, uh, they're probably looking for some allies to get involved in this war, specifically allies that border China and Vietnam. Unfortunately for the blue team, they don't really have any allies that border China. India would be the most likely contender, but I doubt they would want to be drawn into a war with China over Vietnam. Plus, I would pull Pakistan in, so that would be a more irritating war for India to fight. But Thailand is definitely a possibility, but I don't really think the government there would really want to get involved in the war. So for now, we just have the US relying on naval power. Some more landings are made along the Cambodian coast, which eventually links up two fronts. And then we actually have the capitulation of Cambodia. So with this, we do have China having an easier front up against Vietnam, but the thing is, Laos and Cambodia aren't the uh, the best, you know, richest and strongest countries. Just like Myanmar over here, they're both pretty poor, and I doubt they would be able to hold off against Western allies. So overall, we do actually have this kind of backfiring on China as Western troops push up Laos. They then do a similar encirclement as China did and cut off Chinese and Vietnamese troops. So now the Northern Vietnamese and Chinese armies are both stuck over here in two different areas. The two sides do eventually manage to link up, but this does come at the cost of losing all of South Vietnam. Now, you might be thinking that uh, they could just, you know, evacuate these troops and push them back up into China and North Vietnam. Vietnam, but uh, the problem is the U.S. has complete naval superiority over this region. U.S. ships can easily just dock in the Philippines or even Taiwan if they really wanted to. Maybe, you know, South Vietnam and just push over here. And the, uh, the American Navy is a lot more advanced and a lot better than the Chinese Navy. So keeping said thing in mind, um, the Chinese aren't really able to gain superiority, which would definitely lead to some problems. It's also the reason why China hasn't taken over South Korea or Taiwan yet. And if you've been watching my other videos, which you probably should be, why, why wouldn't you be? Did you know that China usually is able to take Taiwan? And that is mostly because the China has the naval superiority, 
But in my other videos, we also have the US being distracted by other countries. In this situation, we have the full US Navy over here in the Pacific. So anyway, back down south, we have the uh, troops over here in North Vietnam just being obliterated. And this big loss leads to a bigger push up into Laos and North Vietnam. We eventually see the capitulation of Laos and Western allies approach the border of China. A naval landing is made and this island is captured. I swear to God, I'm actually, I'm just gonna look it up. Okay, it's called Hainan. They capture Hainan. So with this, uh, China is now losing territory and uh, yeah, it, it doesn't really look too good for them. Of course, China is a strong country, the third strongest in the world. And I'm sure they'd be able to hold back any, you know, naval landings or any advances into Chinese territory. So for now, we just have skirmishes along the Vietnamese border. Luckily, though, for the Red Team, um, Vietnam is known for something, and that is guerrilla warfare. So we do have the Northern Vietnamese doing said thing and uh, kind of just, you know, really taking a toll on the Western Army. We eventually see one large pocket over here in the occupied territory, which eventually does lead Chinese troops to flood in and connect with it. And in a very surprising chain of events, we actually have a pretty big encirclement over here in northern vietnam so with this we actually have western troops putting all troops over here in order to save this encirclement because there is a very large amount of men in this encirclement so with this we actually have the west withdrawing a lot of troops from over here and pushing them over here in order to help this encirclement that is because there is a lot of troops in here so with this china is allowed to push back into lao while we do see these encircled troops getting out so now we see this where china has regained control over northern vietnam or I guess northern North Vietnam. From here, China does advance down and manages to make another encirclement. This time, these troops are unfortunately forced to surrender, and the Chinese push down back into North Vietnam is continued. We see another guerrilla pocket pop up, and China is able to connect with it again. So with this, we have Western troops withdrawing from northern North Vietnam and pushing all troops over to this encirclement. Now, this does lead to a very sticky situation because they left this side undefended, so now China is now pushing down the Vietnamese coasts. Western troops do manage to withdraw, but now they're stuck in a very bad situation and are prone to another encirclement. So what does the blue team do? Well, naval barrage. The US Navy bombards the coast of Vietnam, destroying a lot of ports and uh, very much hurting the Chinese army. So with this, we actually do have a bounce back of Western troops and they do manage to push back up to the front line. And for now, we just have the front being held right here where uh, it's most thin. Advancing any further would be a bad idea since, you know, the whole encirclement thing could happen again. So once again, we're stuck in a stalemate. So now looking ahead in the future, we have resupplyment, rebuilding, and then more troop numbers. Now this is mainly for the blue team, but it is also a little bit on the red team. So there's going to be some resistance. But other than that, the blue team resumes its push back up into northern Vietnam and Laos. Troops easily manage to capture the northern Vietnamese coast. All their troops move to make an encirclement, similar to the one that the Chinese made against the blue team. The encirclement is successful and another big slaughter is happening down here in southern Laos. And overall, the blue team is seeing a lot more success in their new campaign. We even have blue team troops crossing over into southern China, although this front doesn't really get expanded anymore since that really isn't the goal. So looking ahead a few weeks or maybe even months, we have a front line that looks like this. We have another encirclement over here and it seems like these two areas are really prone to being encircled. But otherwise, uh, the front is at a stalemate once again. And uh, it is here that we see the most amount of realism in any video. We have countries just leaving the war because, it, I mean, it's just Vietnam. But this time, it's actually going to be a reverse effect. So in real life, the U.S. withdrawed from Vietnam. Yeah, but in this timeline, we're having China withdraw from Vietnam. So without any allies or any foreign aid, we eventually have Laos capitulating. And then we have Northern Vietnam capitulating. Now, as for punishment for China, I'm not really sure what the blue team would come up with. But for now, let's just go ahead and look at a peace treaty with Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. All right, looking at this peace treaty, nothing too eventful here. Uh, obviously, we have the reunification of Vietnam, and then we have Vietnam annexing Laos. Cambodia is given a new pro-Western government, and uh, now China has a new front on their doorstep. So with this, um, I could honestly probably see some kind of new Pacific maybe like a Pacific Treaty Organization, kind of like NATO. So that could look something like this. You know, obviously, we have the US and Canada. We have Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, the Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, Australia, and New Zealand. Other countries that might join this, maybe Malaysia, maybe Papua New Guinea. Then obviously we would have some of these Oceanic countries joining, although they really wouldn't have a, a purpose of being in there. And other than that, I'm not really sure if anyone else would want to join. Maybe Indonesia, but that's taken with a stretch. I'm not really sure how, I mean... I don't know. So for now, let's just go ahead and keep this new alliance looking like this. And yeah, so that's going to do it for this video. Um, This is what would happen if the Vietnam War happened again in 2022. Obviously, this video isn't meant to be realistic, Uh, mostly focusing on entertainment and then taking some aspects of realism and intertwining that with the, the, the entertainment, if that makes any sense. So that has been this video. Once again, make sure you guys check out my second channel, which is Aedis Goes Pro. I'm going to be doing a PC building video on there pretty soon. I have a Discord server if you want to join that. Link to that in the description. I also have Twitter. 
if uh, for any reason you want to follow me on Twitter, then you can. It's just at it is pro. Same as the channel name. And yeah, so once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.